understanding quaternions is a good way to speed up your game development process. For a long time, they were kind of mystery to me, but understanding them, or at least to the point to know how to use them, is vital for more rapid code creation. Hi, I'm Peter, and welcome to Sunny Valley Studio Tutorials. In this short series, we will take a look at using most useful quaternion methods in 2D and 3D environment. Let's start with asking ourselves what quaternions are and what are they used for. First, if you take a look at Unity documentation on the topic, we can read that quaternions are used to represent rotation. So why do we use quaternions instead of Euler angles? Well, the problem is, to apply Euler angle rotation, we need to calculate the matrix multiplication. Matrix multiplication allows us to apply a translation, rotation and scaling of the object all in one operation. But if we use Euler angles for, for this, there is something called gimbal lock. Basically, it causes a glitch where the object jumps from one rotation to another, not smoothly. Now, we don't want to experience any issues during the rotation process. This is why Unity uses quaternions. Quaternions work by calculating the rotation in 4D imaginary space. Imaginary meaning it uses the imaginary number, square root of i equals minus 1. Now, some of you might have had complex numbers at university, like I did when I was getting my engineering degree. But will it help us when using quaternions in Unity? Not exactly. It's just important to understand that the resulting quaternion can be mapped onto another coordinate system, like the one our game object uses. This all means that quaternions calculate the rotation and we can apply this rotation onto our game object. As we can read in the documentation, there are only a couple of methods in the quaternion class that are responsible for 99% of the code we write. So let's talk about how they work. We will start with look rotation and we will move through angle, Euler, slurp, from rotation and identity throughout this series of videos. Let's go to the first issue, the look rotation. So, look rotation take two parameters, vector three forward and predefined vector three upwards that is equal to vector three up. The result of this is a rotation that aligns Z axis with the first parameter, so forward, and X axis is aligned to the cross product between two parameters, so uh, forward and upwards. As you might recall, a cross product of a vectors is like creating a plane out of those two vectors in the equation and finding out a vector that is perpendicular to both of those. This is shown in the image on the right, and uh, there is a case where there are two vectors that meet those constraints. Depending on which, in which order you pass the parameters, we can get a negative vector or a positive vector. So this is worth keeping in mind when you find yourself passing two parameters and something doesn't work, then maybe you have passed them in the wrong order. In one of my previous tutorials, we were creating a turret rotation to make the turret follow the mouse and point in the direction that the mouse is pointing at. This was achieved by the usage of the code shown below. Mind that x-axis is the axis that the turret is pointing towards. We can see that we pass to look rotation z-axis as the first parameter and direction from tank turret to the end point, which is our mouse click position as the second parameter. This is case when we want to use look rotation at a 2D, in a 2D space. And uh, after creating this rotation, we are adding 90 degrees to the rotation. So why is that? Let's look at the explanation. Blue axis is the Z axis that we have passed as the first parameter. So the Z axis of our tank will align with the Z axis that uh, because we have passed it as the first parameter. The direction in which we want to look is marked with red arrow, 
it ends where the blue dot is drawn so this is the point where we have clicked or we are pointing with our mouse if we pass to look rotation z-axis as the first parameter and red vector as the second parameter we will turn the x-axis in the direction of the cross product of both of those vectors which is the green vector shown in the image this is all fine and well but we are pointing in a different direction that our resulting x-axis is pointing towards because x-axis is pointing towards the green vector in the same direction because of that we need to add 90 degrees because we know that adding 90 degrees will move the x-axis of our tank in the valid direction because cross product is a vector that is 90 degrees to the direction vector and to the z-axis so in the end look rotation will change the direction in which z and x axis of the game object are pointing towards so the result is that our tank turret is following our mouse without any issues and it all works because of the second method that we have in our code and this method is rotate towards now in unity documentation the description is a little bit vague so uh, this root method allows us to rotate the tank turret from starting position so where it is currently pointing in the direction of our my mouse pointer while providing the speed of rotation and the rotation is constant it has constant speed depending on what we pass to as the parameter but why do we use this and not the quaternion dot slurp well uh, the difference is that the slurp offer us the way to do the rotation in a given time we provide the percentage of the rotation as the last parameter imagine a guard tower that detects a player the guard tower will want to rotate its view field uh, to spot the player and since you want to, the game to be fun you provide the player with the time that he has for hiding from the view of the tower guards and the slurp method is perfect for this provide the constant time so the player always know that he has this amount of time to hide on the other hand the uh, rotate towards allows you to rotate with constant speed which is useful if you want to preserve constant conditions like when aiming a tank turret okay but what about 3d well let's look at the example in this example we have a cube that will be followed by a robot a robot is pointing in the z direction and uh, the y axis is the rotation axis of the robot and it has a script that has that takes target a speed of rotation and a bull flag only y let's play and the robot is rotating towards the cube and we can move the cube and the robot rotates but because we are using the look rotation it also rotates around the x axis and z axis depending on how we place our cube now to prevent that because we might not want to rotate like this we can make this flag only y and in this case our robot will only follow on the x z plane the cube but how does it work now the previous demo was using quaternion dot slurp and the rotation was quite smooth now we are using rotate towards and we increase the speed up to 200 and the difference now is the rotation now is a of constant speed while the slurp took the time as the parameter so it looked much smoother when the rotation is constant it looks uh, well it doesn't look that smooth when we do big increments and small increments on the other hand slurp took the same amount of time to do the rotation okay so here we can see that the use of look rotation is much simpler we only pass it a direction making sure that the robot is set correctly so he looks in the direction of z axis and the y axis is his rotation axis so we can see that look rotation now only takes direction and calculates the correct rotation on every plane so on x z plane and on 
X, Y and Z, Y planes. And that's why we have the flag only Y to make it uh, the robot rotate only around the Y axis. The transform the rotation can uh, be calculated by quaternion dot slurp to achieve a smoother rotation, not depending on the uh, length of uh, the distance between the previous position and new position of the cube. Well, rotate towards uh, preserves the constant speed of rotation, and we all apply it to the transform dot rotation to rotate it, and we draw a ray from transform dot position to transform forward to show at which direction the robot is pointing towards. Okay, I hope you have enjoyed this tutorial. In the next part, we will look at the other methods in the Quaternion class. So for now, so please subscribe if you enjoyed this content. Please leave a comment about what I can improve in those tutorials. And if you like, please support me on Patreon. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.